this case was actually this week. Um, I had a 58 year old female with some various medical issues, um, with some alcohol use, really a poor historian, uh, came in with weakness uh, and a little bit of anemia, white count, and she was admitted overnight. Overnight, her white count went from about 12 to 30, I believe. She ended up having to get on pressors and her blood count dropped further. She had no imaging at this point, and I was asked to just kind of look for her anemia. She really wasn't complaining a lot about her abdomen, which was a little bit unusual. And so this is what I saw when I went down. Uh, the picture on the left, you can see a large ulcer. Um, and then if you look on that picture on the left, you can see at the nine o'clock edge of that ulcer, what looks like a through and through perforation. Uh, the picture on the right, I got a little bit closer just to evaluate. Uh, and sure enough, you know, gross perforation there. You can see through and through whenever I would do a little suction, I would get bubbles that would start coming towards me. Um, so this is something that I probably in the past would have just you know, really not done much for, or called the surgeon, and, you know, probably called it a day at this point. You know, because I have the padlock, I decided to take a shot at it. I don't have a video of this one, unfortunately. I do have some good images. Uh, the picture on the left is as I have the padlock on the scope. At that point, the ulcer started to ooze a little bit, but that's a good picture, kind of looking down the rifle barrel. Uh, on the left, there is an obvious hole and perforation there. And then on the picture of the right, you can see, you know, the large ulcer. And just to give you a little bit, uh, you know, you can see this, the pylorus in the very bottom right corner, just to give you an approximate about how actually expands, how big this actual ulcer was uh, with a perforation. So the picture on the right is after the padlock had been deployed um, by the next day, she was off pressers. Uh, at that point, we put her on, you know, I, I think we did Merim on her. Her white count went from 30 down to 15 by the next day. Uh, no further bleeding, and she stayed one more night. She was downgraded to the floor, and she was actually sent home within, you know, two to three days of this perforation. And like you said, that was this past week. So, so far, so good. So I think that was something that was a significant save. Um, I think that particular surgery you know, would have been a very tough surgery for any surgeon. I don't know if that's something they could have patched. It would not have surprised me if they would have had to do some type of antrectomy, uh, some kind of gastro, jejunostomy, or, or something just based on how that tissue looks. So uh, we'll see how she does. But, you know, this was last week. And like I said, she was discharged home with no surgery with that full thickness perforation within two to three days uh, and did well. Um, white count improved. We rescanned her with oral contrast and uh, no leak at all through that, what was obviously a perforation. So I think for her, that was a big time save. Now uh, we'll see, but I'm very, I'm optimistic that, you know, this will probably be curative and, you know, she won't have any further issues with this just based how she did in the post-op period.